Welcome. Uh, today we're going to be practicing a physical practice and some breath work that's balancing for springtime. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get started in any comfortable seated position. If you need a bolster or blanket underneath your hips, go ahead and set yourself up so that you're comfortable and you'll be able to sit up tall. Go ahead and put your first finger and thumb together, Yana Mudra. Right. Translates as gesture or seal of knowledge. And settle into the hips. So, let go of any unnecessary tension around the heart and throat and around your jaw. You want to bring your attention to your eyes and make sure that they're still, either focused internally or externally at one point. Then start to focus on your breathing pattern, allowing your fullest breath to come in. Start getting more involved in the subtle sensations and movement within your body. And as you stay mindful of the breath, start to focus on your intention for class today. And this could be something you'd like to manifest in terms of your health or well-being. It could be a spiritual aspiration you have within your own heart. And as you continue to focus on that intention, take the next three breaths with awareness at the heart center, right behind the sternum. palms together in front of the heart center. We ask and trust that our practice today supports this intention and moves it towards its fullest expression. And slowly open the eyes. And we're going to start you guys off on all fours. <clears throat> the wrists on the shoulders and the knees under your hips. And if you have any wrist issues, you can actually do this on the forearms and you get the wrists and shoulders um, wrist and elbow shoulder width distance apart. Good. And we're going to start with a simple spinal wave. So start off with the tip of the tailbone, chest and head all lifting up. Take a full deep breath in there. And then leave your head up. Start tucking the tailbone as you exhale. Feel lower, middle, upper back move and relax the neck last. And then keep your head heavy. Start to tip the tailbone up first. Feel lower, middle, upper back move and head lifts up last. And you're going to just do that two more times. Just start warming up the muscles along the spine, lower and upper back. Make sure you're following through with your breath so that your inhalation and exhalation is just a little bit longer than your movement. And this will be the last round. You might notice certain areas also along the spine or in the upper lower back that might need more attention today. And that will be the last round. Good. So once you come back up to a neutral position on all fours, go ahead and lift your left leg up parallel to the floor behind you. And then right arm goes up. You can do this also again on the forearms just by shifting the forearm parallel to the short edge of the mat. Go ahead and exhale, tuck the elbow in toward the rib cage and knee toward the chest. And then extend the arm and the leg back out on your next inhalation. And then continue and do two more. You're going to feel the deep muscles in the hip structure engage, right, helping to stabilize. And you're going to also feel the deep muscles in that supporting arm and shoulder. Right? Also the deep muscles in the spine, get a little workout here. Last one, you'll extend the arm and the leg out and then bring the palm and the knee down. And then switch sides. On your next exhalation, go ahead and bring the knee and the elbow in. Remember, if you have any wrist issues, you can do the same variation on both sides, even if you have shoulder or wrist issues that are unilateral. Right? Practice the same way on both sides. Last round. Ending on an inhalation. And take a breather in child's pose. The knees can be a little wider than the hips if it's more comfortable for you. But keep the arms stretched out in front. Just get a little more length in the sidelines of the body. Let the weight of your head feel completely supported by the floor underneath you so these neck and upper back muscles relax. And on the next inhalation, we'll bring you up onto all fours. We'll take the right leg forward into a lunge. So with this, if it's not comfortable for your knee, go ahead and fold the mat over one third of the way, right? Or use a towel or a blanket. Make sure you give yourself permission to do this so that it's comfortable for you because we're going to be here for a little while. And the next inhalation, sweep the arms back and up. You're going to do like a full circle with your shoulders. And then as you forward fold, you're going to feel the right side of the navel press up against the thigh and then come back 
to a full circle again as you inhale. And you'll notice there's just the slightest extension to the spine on the inhalation coming up, and then slightest flexion to the spine as you forward fold. And this will be the last round. You're going to take the arms up. You're going to keep them up, keep the length in the navel, and then twist toward your right. Yep. Now, if this is challenging for you to get the arm hooked over the thigh, go ahead and bring your left palm down, arm is supportive, and then your right arm supports on the right thigh, which helps to maintain the twist. Otherwise, the arm would just hook over the thigh and the palms press together and you stack your elbows. Next inhalation, come out of the twist. Go ahead and take the arms up, lengthen the navel. I'm going to have you bring the palms down and take you back into downward facing dog. Just to neutralize the spine and the hips. Downward facing dog, the wrists are shoulder width distance apart, the hips are lifting up, strong lower belly, bend your knees as much as you need to, and the feet are hip width distance apart. And then we're going to switch the legs and take the left leg forward into the lunge. Make sure the ankle lands between your wrists, even if you have to grab the foot for that. You set yourself up so you're comfortable in the lunge, and then bring the arms back and up into a full circle. Okay? So take your time and go at your own pace so that your breath feels like it initiates the movement. Get a full range of motion in the shoulder joint. Make sure you stay settled in the hips. Okay? Making sure that this front knee stays over the ankle the whole time. Don't let it move back. That's going to happen sometimes. So this is the last round, and we're going to take the arms up, we're going to keep them there, and then twist toward the other side. I'm taking a few breaths here. It's important that we don't rest in this supporting arm or shoulder. So you just want to use the counterforce against the arm and the thigh to help lift the chest and maintain the twist. Okay. Don't be too aggressive. You should feel more of the twist coming from the lower rim of the rib cage, not the lower back. You want to come out of the twist on your inhalation, go back into lunging crescent moon, arms up. Palms down and downward facing dog. To neutralize the spine and the hips. <clears throat> Again, bend your knees as much as you need to. Make sure the shoulder blade muscles are strong. And then we'll bring both feet forward toward the front edge of the mat next. <clears throat> Come up halfway. Place hands on the shins. And if you have any lower back issues, make sure that you're staying at this halfway point when you deepen your forward fold. This is about as far as you're going to want to go. Even bend the knees a little bit if you need to. Right? This is important to support the lower back. Come up on your inhalation with a strong back. Take your arms overhead next to your ears. And then palms together in front of the chest as you exhale. Now at this point, if you have any lower back issues, you might want to keep the feet hip width distance apart. Otherwise, we bring the feet in a little closer toward the midline. You're going to sink the hips, bend your knees, keep the uh, palms in front of the chest. Now here, you've got a slight lift to the chest, broadening of the collarbones, and you should feel more weight in your hips and heels. We're going to do a little prostration here. As you inhale, palms straight up through the midline, lean back, forward fold as you exhale. Remember, if there's lower back issues, you're only going down about halfway. Otherwise, you can give into the thoracic spine a little bit, relax your neck at the end. Inhale, come all the way up, lean back. When you lean back, you might engage the glutes a little bit, lift the rib cage. Palms down the midline of the body as you exhale, sinking the hips. No forward pressure in the knee. And then come up, and you're going to do that two more times. So we'll bring some strengthening into the hip and into the spine, and loosen up some of the muscles in the front, back, and side lines of the body. Remember, every time you go in or out of the forward fold, you've got a strong back. Last one. We're going to do one more forward fold. And then the next time you come out of your forward fold, we're going to meet back in equal standing pose. Palms will just be in front of the chest, and you're essentially in a standing position. And you'll want to feel pretty even through the feet. At this point, there should be a neutral relationship between your hips and your rib cage. And the base of the skull feels like it kind of floats over the shoulders. And then we're going to take a turn over toward the left here. You're going to take a wide stance. If your arms are to a T formation, your ankles should be underneath your wrists. Right? Bring the outer edges of the feet in line with the short edges of your mat. They don't have to be on that edge, but just in line with them, parallel. And then clasp your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers as best as you can and straighten your arms. On your next exhalation, hinge at the front of your hip and take the forward fold. Lower belly muscles just above and behind the pubic bone should feel engaged. Make sure you lead with the chest and not your chin. And once you come down, if there's more flexibility in the shoulders, you might feel like the hands lift up away from the hips. And this is OK as long as it doesn't create any unnecessary tension in your upper back and neck. 
And on the next inhalation, bring the torso up. Release the hands. Bring the feet a little closer toward the midline, probably by an inch on both sides, not too much. And then turn the right toes out so that the toes face the short edge of the mat, and then your left toes come in. Good. Arms to a T formation. And then start leaning over toward your right. You take the right hand anywhere lower than the knee. You can even let some of the weight transfer into the shin bone by taking the hand onto the shin. And then left arm, slight rotation with shoulder, and then arm over the ear. Good. Take a couple of breaths here. And remember, once you're in this posture, this front left hip point, knee, and the toes should all be in the same direction. Right? Left knee, uh, right knee should be in line with the right toes. If you want to take a little bit more of a core strengthening variation, you can take both arms alongside your ears. Inhale and come all the way up. And hands to the hips, switch the sides. Without changing the distance between your heels, we'll turn left toes out, right toes in. Arms to a T formation, soften the top of the shoulders, and then lean over toward your left. Whichever variation you practice on the last side, do here. Right arm goes over the ear. You want to find length and space in the right side line of the body. A little bit more core strengthening, then the left arm goes up alongside the ear. Make sure you've got strong legs and strong hips, right? Stabilize just between your pubic bone and your sacrum there. Inhale to come up. Feet parallel, and let's go into runner's pose facing your right leg. Take right foot back, go into a full plank or push-up position, and then bring the body down to the floor. You can bring knees down, so you can lower down and what's referred to as Ashtangasana, and then lift the chest up just enough using your palms to feel like you're lengthening the navel, and then bring the flat of the belly back down. Good. Now we're going to take arms out to a a field goal position, which means the elbows are aligned with your shoulders and they're 90 degrees. Go ahead and lift your legs up first by engaging the thighs and the hips, then engage the back, lift the arms and the chest up. Make sure you're not jutting the chin forward. The neck should feel pretty neutral. There might be a little more extension up here, but make sure you're not straining the neck. And one more breath in locust pose. And then we're going to lower down. Slide your elbows underneath your shoulders. Forearms and wrists should be shoulder with distance apart. Elbows are directly under shoulders if possible. That doesn't feel good for your lower back. You might take the elbows forward a little bit. This will help you to bring a little more length into your lower back while still helping to lift the chest and get more of the attention up into the thoracic body. And you have a couple of options here. You can stay here if this feels like a deep enough back bend for you. Otherwise, you'll lift your elbows up. Make sure you don't lock the elbows out and the shoulder blades still drift down the back. Or you can practice bow pose, reaching back for the ankles, tops of the feet, and then lifting the thighs up first, like you did for locust pose, and then pushing the feet into the hands and opening up the chest more. Let's take one more breath here. Then on the next inhalation, go ahead and lower down. Good. Cross the wrists, place the chin on cross wrists. Take a couple of resting breaths. Breathe into the belly. When you breathe into the belly, you'll feel the belly press into the floor, and it'll almost be like a rebounding effect, and you'll feel the expansion in the lower belly and the lower back at the same time. And then lifting the head up, slide the hands under the shoulders, elbows in tight, push straight into the floor, knees can stay on the floor, but lift up onto all fours. and then come down onto your forearms again. Just like Sphinx Pose, you're gonna get the forearms and wrists shoulder width distance apart, okay? and then curl your toes under and lift the hips up like downward facing dog. Okay? Some of you will probably bring the feet in a little closer toward your elbows. Some of you will have to bend your knees if there's tighter hamstrings or lower back. Whatever you need to do to get a little bit more tension and length in your spine, do whatever you need to do in terms of bending the knees or in lifting the hips. Now, from this point on, you can take the right leg up. Take a few breaths on each side. Rest in between rounds or switch sides. 
without uh, taking child's pose. If you're practicing forearm balance, now's your chance. Again, if you feel like you need to take a resting breath in between sides, start losing integrity with the upper body. It's best if you rest for a breath, come back up, make sure you set yourself up with the upper half of the body, and then go ahead and switch sides, taking the left leg forward. Forearm balance, make sure you have all the integrity in the upper half of the body that you had in dolphin pose. And feel a slight stretch in the front of the navel. And then you'll bring both feet down. Take another resting breath in child's pose. You can have the arms alongside the body if it's more comfortable for you this time. It might help you to relax the shoulders and the chest a little bit more. Or the arms stretched out in front. Your choice. Slide the hands next to the knees. Come up onto all fours. And we're going to take a twist here next. So you're going to roll a little bit more onto your left hip and bring the sole of your left foot to the inside of the right thigh. All right. This one might be a little tricky for some of you. If you feel like the hips are uneven, if you have any problems with your knees, go ahead and use a bolster underneath your hip. Good. And then once you get situated, you're going to twist towards your right. Make sure you inhale to lengthen first, and then, oh, I'm sorry, twist to your left. Wah, wah. Ta. And then <laughs> make sure the back arm supports, and then the right arm supports the twist. So the back arm supports the uh, spinal erector muscles and lower back. Right arm supports the twist. Keep the twist in the torso in that direction, but then gaze toward the opposite direction and feel like you want to look toward the right shoulder blade. Take one more breath here. Now on your next inhalation, come out of the twist, unravel, and switch the feet. Just be careful with the knees. If you're sitting on a bolster or something, you might have to shift over to the side a little bit more to accommodate the back leg being bent. So the right foot to the inside of thigh, lift as you inhale and twist as you exhale. You're twisting toward the right now, left hand to the outside of the thigh. Now for most of us, we're gonna feel this left hip up, lift up a little bit, and that's okay. You just don't wanna give into it. You really just want the weight of your hip to feel settled. And then twist the head, uh, twist the cervical spine to the other direction. And take one more breath there. And the next inhalation, come out of the twist. Yep. And we'll extend both legs forward. We're going to lie onto our back next. We're going to take a version of staff pose or tandasana. You're going to take the legs straight up to the sky. Take arms alongside the ears with the palms facing each other. And for some of us, this can be a little bit of a struggle. So we might need to bend the knees and then get a little more flexion in the hip because essentially you want a 90 degree angle right at the crease of your hip, right? Relationship between the thigh and the rib cage. And so if that ain't happening for you, then you want to bend the knee. Good. And if you're bending the knee now, you're going to bend the knee in the next posture for sure. Okay. So go ahead and use a little momentum to rock yourself up to a balanced seated position. If the feet come down initially, that's okay. Just get them back up. Bend your knees as much as you need to to get a lift in the chest, draw arm bones back into the shoulder sockets, and straighten the legs only as much as is possible. If you start rounding the upper back, you've gone too far. Take one more breath in boat pose. And then slowly lower all the way down onto the back, heels down, and then roll the spine down. Good. Bring the knees in toward chest. Wrap the arms around the shins and take a couple of rocks from side to side. If your head moves from side to side and it feels okay, you can allow that to happen. And at this point, after you've massaged the muscles around the lower back and the muscles along the spine, go ahead and find a comfortable position for Shavasana, corpse pose. You want to check in with the hips Rib cage, lower back, shoulder blades, upper back, and base of the skull. And then it's from those main points where the legs and the arms will find a little bit more of a comfortable position to rest in. Go ahead and relax the muscles around your eyes, jaw, the tongue even relaxes in the back of the mouth. As you continue to settle in, 
You want to make sure all the muscles and the bones are settling in and giving in to gravity. Keep the mind's eye attentive at one particular point. Maybe a subtle sensation or a movement in the ribcage, navel. And stay receptive as you absorb and assimilate the benefits of the practice. And stay receptive to all that's within your highest good in regards to healing and resolution. Slowly bring your attention outward. Start to create movement through fingers, toes, ankles, and wrists. And on the next deep breath in, stretch your arms overhead. <clears throat> and bring the knees in toward chest. And roll over to the right side for a moment. Use both palms to gently bring yourself up. Find a comfortable seated position. So like you did at the beginning of class. And today we're going to practice a breathing technique called Brahmari. It's a humming breath. So you're inhaling through the nostrils, exhale, making a humming sound. You want to keep most of your attention at the front part of the brain while you're doing the practice. And then after you're done, you're going to bring more attention to the center of the brain, just behind the eyes. And then you'll be able to feel a subtle sensation there every time you breathe in and out. And keep your attention there. If the mind wanders, which it will, don't worry about it. Just keep bringing it back to that center point. Um, it doesn't matter how many times the mind veers away from that point of concentration, it matters how many times you bring it back. So have the hands again in Yara Mudra, first finger and thumb together. And you're gonna sit up tall, close your eyes, bring the attention to the front part of the brain, and we'll begin. Inhale.
take the attention outward. Deep breath in. As you exhale, feel the support of the floor underneath you. Then we'll bring the palms together in front of the heart center. Take a few moments for reflection and gratitude. Anything that moves through our hearts or our minds, we'd like to acknowledge or give thanks for. And we ask that all beings, without one exception, know peace and be released from suffering. So it is, and so it shall be. Namaste.